it's not as confusing as Prometheus. Hello everyone and welcome to Movie Reviews by Josh. My name is Josh Terry and today I'm going to tell you about Alien Covenant, which is a prequel and a sequel and kind of a middle child and kind of a hybrid and kind of a lot of things. All joking aside, Alien Covenant is a sequel to Prometheus, which came out a couple of years ago, which itself was the prequel to the Alien... Well, I don't even know what it is now because you had Alien, you had Aliens, you have Alien 3, you had Alien Resurrection, you have the Alien versus Predator and all that kind of thing. So all of that stuff, Prometheus was the prequel to that. And now Alien Covenant is a sequel to the prequel. Are you with me? So far, so good. So my take on Alien Covenant is that this is Ridley Scott's effort to connect kind of the highbrow philosophical Prometheus stuff to the more traditional horror movie, there's a monster out to get us, alien stuff. And I think it works and it doesn't work. Um, I think fans of the franchise who are frustrated because Prometheus was very kind of high-minded and kind of ambiguous and didn't have monsters killing people so much are going to be happy because Alien Covenant has that. There's a lot of monsters killing people and stuff. Um, there's still some of the Prometheus stuff. There's still a lot of the mythology that's being connected in here, um, but not so much. So Alien Covenant picks up a few years after Prometheus where there's a new ship called the Covenant. They have 2000 colonists who are in cryo sleep or frozen sleep or whatever. Is that even a real thing? They're floating out in the galaxy. The ship gets hit by a shock wave. One thing leads to another and they discover this other planet that's seven years closer that might be a much more hospitable place to colonize. So they show up at this planet. You know that things are, I mean, this is a bad idea, right? It's pretty obvious. They show up on this planet, this, this beautiful planet with, with all kinds of cool mountains and valleys, and it's just gorgeous. I mean, this, this movie really, really looks good. Uh, a couple of people, they knock over the spores. The spores implant, and suddenly you have chest bursters, and you have monsters and people dying, and it's kind of the same old story. But right when you think that they're just going to follow the traditional alien formula from the early movies, which I actually liked, by the way, but instead of being redundant, suddenly we meet David, played by Michael Fassbender, who is the synthetic, the android, who has been left behind from Prometheus. Or actually, technically not left behind, but I'm not going to get into that. David is there. He takes all the people into safety, sort of into safety, and then things kind of snowball from there. Uh, so again, there's kind of a connection between Prometheus and the more tried and true formula of Alien where you have the monster and there's a bunch of people and it's just kind of killing them one by one. So ultimately, I think I'm going to wind up at about two and a half stars out of four on this. This is an entertaining movie. I think that people who enjoy the original films are going to enjoy this one more because it's not taking the same angle as Prometheus. At the same time, it does feel a little redundant. The formula is still there. There's still kind of that moment where you think everything's fine, but you know it's not really fine, and then things get bad again. And this isn't really a spoiler because, it's, I mean, it's, it's just very obvious that this is what's going on. It's very, very violent. They, they're definitely going out of their way to come up with the grossest ways possible to kill the random bottom feeder, cannon fodder people who are not as critical to the plot. The point that I really come to as I've been thinking about this movie since seeing it, is do we really need to solve the mystery? Because while this does get to a little bit more of a traditional alien movie, it does spend enough time with the Prometheus stuff and kind of the origin stuff and the engineers and the creation and who created who and all this kind of thing that I just kind of ask myself, I think it's kind of cooler when you don't know where it's all coming from. I personally am a big fan of Alien and Aliens. I thought those movies were awesome. And I loved that they were very simple. They were very streamlined. It was, it was not, they weren't boring. They weren't unimaginative. They were just focused. Whereas it's kind of like, if I, if I can divert a little bit here, it's kind of like seeing Darth Vader at eight years old. It's like seeing Boba Fett when he's a little kid. I don't want to know where, you know, where they were when in, their, in their infancy. I think it's kind of cool to have things that are just there and we don't have to know where they came from. Now, granted, if you're a big hardcore fan, I understand. And if you get into all of this and all the minutia, there are lots of videos on YouTube that are going to explore the ins and outs. And more power to you. That's, that's great. 
I do kind of feel though that it's like, well, I don't know that I need it. And I'm not sure that Alien Covenant benefits from all that. So tell me, what do you think? Do you want to know everything that's happened and why? Do you want to know the explanation behind all of it? Or do you like to have a little bit of mystery? Leave your answers in the comments below. So as I mentioned, two and a half stars out of four. And yes, this is definitely a rated R movie. Uh, there is some pretty consistent R-rated profanity throughout. And there's a lot of violence, as you can expect. I mean, you're talking about a franchise that made its mark with an alien bursting out of a guy's chest on a medical table in front of everybody. I mean, this is, this is a violent horror franchise genre film. There's also some sexual content. It doesn't stay sexual for very long. I'm not going to elaborate. So thanks as always for watching. This has been Movie Reviews by Josh. Be sure to subscribe before you leave and turn your notifications on so you can see our new videos as soon as they are ready. And thanks again, as always, to Rock Gator, our proud sponsor, maker of fine waterproof backpacks and socks. The backpacks, and then they just also have socks. See ya.